Nobora Kujisaki is surprisingly one of the most important characters in the story of Jujutsu Kaisen and that's because she has the power to truly defeat Sukuna, especially after the events of the recent chapter. You see, after the Shibuya incident, most fans assumed that this was the end of Nobora's story since she seemingly died. But what if I told you that this was not the end? What if I told you that she was still alive? To understand why this makes sense, we need to break down this video into two separate sections. In the first section, I'll explain why Nobora is still alive, then in the second section, I'll explain why she has the power to defeat Sukuna. And yes, I'm talking about current Sukuna that's inhabiting Megumi's body. Now if we go back to the events of the Shibuya incident, we can see that Nobara seemingly died after being touched on the left eye by Mahito using Idol Transfiguration. This allowed Mahito to damage her soul thus damaging her body. Since per Mahito's understanding of the body and soul, the shape of the body will always be dependent on the shape of the soul. And since he has the ability to manipulate the shape of the soul, he's able to inflict damage on a deeper level as opposed to just damaging the body itself. One thing to note is that Mahito himself wasn't sure if he would be able to damage her soul with one touch since he wasn't able to end Nanami with one touch when they first fought. In fact, he believed that it would take two to three more tries to make it happen. What this means is that the stronger the individual being affected by idol transfiguration, the more chance they have at surviving. This brings us to Arata Nito who is a first year Jujutsu sorcerer. It's explained that his curse technique allows him to stop wounds from getting worse. It's actually pretty simple. He doesn't heal wounds but he will stop the bleeding and the pain. This is relevant since the moments after Nabora seemingly died, he arrived with Todo and rendered aid. Now it does say that Nabora is likely dead but then later says that she has no pulse and isn't breathing but it's not a 0% chance that she will survive which likely means that even though she's in this current state, she hasn't fully passed on. And this is why I believe that she will awaken reverse curse technique. Now this makes sense since the precedent has been set for shamans to truly understand curse energy and awaken a new ability or technique when on the verge of death as it was for Megumi with domain expansion and Gojo with his reverse curse technique. Now there's one similarity with Gojo's incident and Nobora's and that's the mention of the core of curse energy. Back in Shibuya, Nobora was on the verge of feeling the core of curse energy and of course this is after gaining a deeper understanding of curse energy by performing black flash against the curse wounds. Similar to Gojo who said that on the verge of death he finally understood the core of cursed energy which led to him awakening reverse curse technique thus resurrecting himself. However, before he was able to do that he had to give up on fighting back then only focused on healing himself which gave birth to the technique. This is also similar to what happened with Nabora. She also stopped fighting and seemingly accepted her fate but did she really? It's good to know that we've never gotten confirmation that Nabora is dead, not by the narrator nor the character statements. The most we've gotten was Yuji asking what happened to Nabora and Megumi looking away which could mean anything. It could be that she's alive and neither of them are aware or maybe she's alive but still in critical condition stuck within the world of the living and the world of the dead. Or maybe she was stuck, maybe she was in critical condition but she isn't anymore. You see Gojo didn't heal right away after he was seemingly ended by Toji. It was actually a while after Toji had fought Geito and reported everything to his boss that Gojo resurrected. So suffice to say Gojo was in that state for a while which is likely due to him being in the process of healing. Now you could argue that maybe Gojo wasn't in a bad state as Nobora even after getting stabbed multiple times to the torso, neck and brain for some reason but we know he wasn't dead, he was on the verge of death like Nobora as confirmed by Nita. However, there is one case of someone coming back from the dead using reverse curse technique and that was Yuji himself. You see Yuta was sent on a mission to kill Yuji and he actually did a binding vow which means that he had to kill him to complete the mission. Which Yuta did end up doing by stabbing him through the heart with his katana. Yuta himself confirmed that Yuji did in fact die but he was able to bring him back using reverse curse technique to heal him instantaneously. Which means that if you are dead or on the verge of death like Nobora, there's a chance that you can come back using reverse curse 
Cyber's technique but it may take a while as it did for Yuji and Gojo. Now I know that some people believe that you can't heal someone who has been affected by idle transfiguration but that isn't the case. If you go by Mahito himself, he stated that Sukuna should have been able to heal Junpei who was Yuji's friend who got transformed using idle transfiguration. So this means that the user himself who is Mahito believes that you can use reverse curse technique to transmutate someone back into their original form or to heal someone after they've been affected by idle transfiguration. So that should be the case for Nabora as well. So there is a logical way in which Nobara can make her return if Gege does choose to go that route which I think he will since her specific curse technique is perfect for taking down the likes of Sukuna. So yes, this is where we get into why Nobara might be the key to getting rid of Sukuna. You see, this all goes back to her curse technique called Straw Doll Resonance. With this ability, she's able to create a voodoo-like connection between an opponent and her Straw Doll. So whatever damage she does inflict on the doll will be transferred to her opponent. However, in order to establish that connection, she needs to be in contact with DNA from her opponent, whether it be a limb or some of their blood. The key thing to note here is that her ability doesn't just affect the body, it also damages the soul. This was actually confirmed back in her fight with Mahito's double. You see, while Nobora normally uses a straw doll as a medium to inflict damage, she really doesn't need to. She's also able to use her own body as seen in the fight with the cursed wombs and she was also able to use it through others as well. This was shown when Nobora lodged her nail into the head of Mahito's double then activated resonance. And just for context, Mahito has the ability to split himself in half. So while Yuji was fighting the real Mahito, Nabora was fighting the double. However, when Nabora attacked the double's soul with resonance, it relayed to the soul of the original which then rebounded back to the double causing the same amount of damage to both. And just to be clear, this is because you need to be able to damage the soul to beat Mahito which Nabora was able to do. The reason why this is relevant to Sukuna is that in the recent chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen, Sukuna poured his cursed energy into one of Yuji's fingers, ripped it off, then fed it to Megumi. By doing so, he was able to transfer his soul to Megumi's body and gain control of it. However, by doing so, a piece of Yuji's body along with his blood is now within Megumi's body which is now Sukuna's body. So now there's a blood connection between Megumi and Yuji, similar to how there was a connection between Nobara and the cursed wombs after their blood seeped into her body. What this means is that Nobara can damage Sukuna and Megumi's body by doing damage to Yuji. I don't know, this is actually pretty pretty dark but I do believe that the story will end with the death of both Yuji and Megumi. I believe that as a last resort to stopping Sukuna, Yuji will offer up himself to be sacrificed as into that in chapter 212 before Sukuna transferred his soul to Megumi's body. Only this time it would be Nabara who kills him, not Angel. There's a reason why the bleeding hand with the severed finger was focused on in chapter 213. There's a reason why Nabora's death has never been confirmed. That is the reason. It's also likely that she will be way stronger than she was before. She should gain a dramatic increase in strength and speed similar to Gojo when he truly understood the core of curse energy and awakened reverse curse technique. Now of course Gege might go a completely different route and none of this comes to fruition but that's highly unlikely but we'll see. Well that's it for the video guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think that this is a logical route in which Nabora can come back and do you believe that this way in which she can use resonance to defeat Sukuna, do you think that it's a viable way of defeating Sukuna in the current story? Or do you believe that she has earned the right to defeat Sukuna? Do you believe that Sukuna is a villain for her to defeat? It more seems like Yuji should be the one to defeat Sukuna or maybe Megumi, but in this scenario Yuji is a very important factor in defeating Sukuna since he's laying down his life which he has been planning on doing since this whole debacle started right so he is playing a very important part so I guess he is directly responsible for Tsukuna not being there anymore if this does play out so I guess it could work out but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below do you think it's worth it do you think it makes sense yada 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 blah 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 and also like the video if you're new to the channel so we can get it into the algorithm and subscribe and all that jazz if you want to see more content just like this one but with that being said peace out I'll see you guys next time